Tiger Rear End, the new racing standard for dirt and asphalt, short or intermediate tracks. With motors maxed and transmissions tweaked, there's only one part left to improve, the rear end. The Tiger team reviewed, redesigned, and created a rear end that solved the old problems and has set the new standard. What else makes the Tiger so special? Low drag. Races, seals, carrier, and pinion bearings are all low drag components. And there's more. Racers are winning with Tiger rear ends because they're lighter, stronger, and faster. Tiger rear ends are lighter. Top quality magnesium and aluminum construction saves weight and puts more power to the rear wheels. They're stronger. Double ribbed backs and inner outer bell ribs combine to create the industry's most powerful racing rear end. And faster. With a Tiger, you'll gain 11 to 14 horsepower over a standard rear end. Tiger also offers comprehensive rear end services including new complete race ready units, rebuild services, components for all makes, and DIY kits. Plus, for the Tiger team, it's personal. We manufacture and build all in-house. Customers meet the builders, look at the product up close, and get excited about changing the industry. And to keep it personal, each rear end is built by one technician from start to finish. You're only a phone call away from talking to the man. Now, your whole car is race ready. Tiger, low drag rear ends that are lighter, stronger, and faster. In preparation for your rear end rebuild, you will need the right hand tools and shop equipment. Tiger Rear Ends offers several specialty tools specifically made for rebuilding. Tiger recommends, at a minimum, inspecting and rebuilding your rear end every off season. And you should rebuild more often if you suspect any damage or you're racing a high horsepower car in long distance races. Set the rear end on support bucks to begin the draining process. Pull the high nuts from the rear cover. Remove the two quick change gears. Rotate the unit down. Drain the rear lubricant into a clean pan. Check for any metal bits or pieces that may indicate a part failure. If the lubricant has been run too hot, you will sense a distinct burn smell. Then move the unit into an upright vertical position. Remove the 10 bolts and one short threaded bolt from the center section. Remove the right bell and axle tube. Remove the remaining short threaded bolt and lift off the center section to access the carrier. Unless your shop is set up for this step, Tiger recommends outsourcing the center section to a rear end rebuild specialist. Tiger rear ends can provide this service for you. Note the condition of all the parts by visually inspecting the rest of the components. Check all gears for discoloration. Look for a blue or brown sheen, which can be a sign of overheating. Look for the gear wear patterns, as well as bearing play. In addition, be on the lookout for chips, hairline cracks, and excessive wear. Make sure all bearings spin freely without grinding or catching. Inspect your seals for cracks or deterioration. Check the lower shaft internally and externally for a maximum runout of six thousandths in the center of the lower shaft. Then inspect both bells and the center section for cracks or other damage. Now is the time to decide whether to replace the center section, a right or left bell side, pinion gear and bearings, or one of the axle tubes. Inspect both axles for twist and runout. Then remove and inspect the carrier. Next, ratchet the locker to ensure smooth operation. The greatest area of wear on a typical rear end is the locker. 
First, clamp the unit in a press to contain the springs. Remove the 12 locker bolts. Ease off the press to allow the springs to push the locker cap off the locker housing. After all spring tension is relieved, remove the locker cap from the housing. With disassembly complete, inspect the teeth on all the dog gears. Over time, the teeth will wear and require replacement. The teeth should have a well-defined edge. If any of the edges are worn, replace them. Then thoroughly clean the locker housing and locker cap. During reassembly of the dogs, always use enough oil or gear lube to create a film between all the mating surfaces. The locker assembly goes back together into the housing, sandwiched with a spring on either side. The locker springs are quite strong, and it can be a frustrating task if you don't have a locker spring compressor, which is the proper tool for the job. Most gear specialists use a piece of threaded rod with flanges welded to the nuts so that the rod can be inserted through the locker, and the nuts can be threaded down to compress the locker enough for it to be bolted together. You can fabricate your own, but Tiger sells a locker spring compressor in its toolkit that works quite well. Line up the cap in the housing and reinstall the 12 locker bolts using blue Loctite. Torque the bolts to 25 foot-pounds in an alternating crossing pattern. Complete the reassembly by re-ratcheting the locker to ensure smooth operation. To begin reassembly, remove the two carrier seals. Then back off on the wear pad. Clean all surfaces on the bells and the center section. Set the carrier into the left bell. Then set the center section onto the left bell. While holding the pinion, Press down on the carrier while rocking the carrier back and forth to check for lash. Properly adjusted, you should feel approximately 1 of an inch. Set the right bell on the center section and seat it in a flat position. To measure crush, place three 10 thousandths shims equidistance around the bell. Apply a light amount of pressure between two shims so the third can easily slide in and out like a feeler gauge. Note, if this process does not work, remove the right bell in center and add shims to the right side of the carrier. Then repeat the three shim process. Next, remove the three shims and install four bolts equally spaced around the center section. Torque the four bolts to 40 foot-pounds. Install the flag tool on the pinion and the dial indicator on the cover stud. Rock the flag tool back and forth for a lash reading of eight to 10 thousandths. Remove the dial indicator. Rotate the flag tool 360 degrees. Then reinstall the dial indicator and recheck Repeat this process a total of four times. Remove the dial indicator. Remove the flag tool. Remove the four bolts from the center section. Remove the right bell. Remove the center section and then remove the carrier. To begin final assembly, Install the carrier seals in both bells.
Install the bell O-rings in both bells. Apply a thin coat of silicone to the left and right bells. Apply a small amount of oil to the carrier seals in both the left and right bells. Lubricate the left side carrier bearings before installing the carrier back into the left bell. Put two alignment bolts in the center section. Install the center section using any two bolt holes. Remove two alignment bolts. Reinstall the right bell using two alignment bolts. Install the remainder of the center section bolts, nuts and washers. Install two short threaded bolts using a small amount of high temp silicone. Snug all center section bolts in a crossing pattern. Torque all center section bolts in a crossing pattern to 40 foot pounds. Adjust the wear pad until it touches, back off one quarter turn, then tighten into place. Reinstall the quick change gears and reinstall the rear cover with the 10 high nuts. But do not over tighten. Turn the yoke several times in both directions to assure a proper and complete assembly. Your fresh and rebuild is now complete. Note, after installing the rear end in your car, fill with 7590 weight lubricant to the bottom of the inspection plug on the right bell. Tiger recommends racing with Tiger's high performance full synthetic oil. Tiger rear end, the new racing standard for dirt and asphalt.